Hi, I wanted to start a series uh, clearing the air about beamforming. As I've done courses on Wi-Fi as well as on 5G cellular, I get a lot of interesting questions. And I thought maybe a series which will help us clear the air on some of the points related to a very important technology as we go ahead into higher frequency bands. I thought that would be very useful. So stay tuned for other parts apart from this one. My name is Shrikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So beamforming, pre-processing of uh, signals, spatially, pre-coding, all these things can be clubbed together. And it doesn't apply only to the TX side, though the standards usually deal with the TX side operations because of interoperability. Receivers can also implement beamforming, usually left to their proprietary ways. Okay, so it on the transmitter side it can operate at symbol or signal level. On the receiver side, again it's the same options. And whenever we talk about beamforming at the TX and or the RX, multiple antennas are involved. Uh, though I'm using a Wi-Fi AP, uh, it's applicable maybe to a G node B, uh, E node B, etc. Okay, and uh, it could apply to a variety of uh, station side equipment as well. So, what are some questions that I've got? Because of the way by which we represent the net result of beam forming by these directional beam representation, which is I think a very useful idea. People ask me, is it only applicable in line of sight channels? Quick answer is no, uh, because especially if you take the context for Wi-Fi, uh, it's a typically heavy non-line of sight channel because of the multi-path and the location of the TXs and RXs. Okay, and it, so does that mean that it will not work in line of sight? No, it is. You know, it can work both in line of sight or non-line of sight. And then what is this directional beam representation? Is it what is happening there? No, it is not necessarily what is exactly happening there. It's an abstraction to help us deal with this whole complex technology. Uh, it, has, it has its origins in maybe some very rudimentary form of spatial processing. But today's multi-path channels, um, very rich uh, in some senses, and with technologies trying to transport um, complex signals, this directional beam representation is just an abstraction which helps us kind of manage the complexity because remember real signals bounce off all kinds of things uh, in between, okay? Another question I ask is, are the antennas special by themselves when we do beam forming? Not necessarily because you can have, you know, as in many Wi-Fi APs, typically some reasonably low cost omnidirectional antenna, okay? And so you can have a variety of antenna structures, okay? So line of sight, non-line of sight, lots of different antenna structures, all these can be managed with beamforming. Of course, you will have to build the systems or specify the standards and build the systems accordingly. So let's get a glimpse of how do we do this beam forming in practice at a very high level. The most powerful form of beam forming, in my opinion, is typically digital. Uh, why do I say that? It's because to create the various equivalent spatial patterns, processing the signals digitally gives us the full power over the amplitude and phase and that too for modern day systems which are based on OFDM based technology at a sub carrier level. Okay, this is a very powerful idea. And as you will see as we go on, this enables us to do some things, you know, very interesting things. Is there a price to be paid for, you know, this digital beamforming? Absolutely, yes. All these lines that you see, the transceiver chains, uh, DAC ADCs, depending on TXRX. Uh, PA, LNA, and then the actual physical antennas, all this has to be managed, okay? So there is a price to be paid. Is there something simpler? If you are doing something, you know, mostly in a non, in a line of sight world, um, you can do analog beam forming. As I said, it has its limitations, but it can also prove to be very useful. Typically 
it's done at the RF, okay, uh, classically using phase shifters. Uh, and it has some, as I said, it kind of adds to our uh, kit of things that we can have as we achieve certain interesting spatially oriented transmissions. And because there is a lot of emphasis on very high frequency, you can say, uh, um, sort of uh, systems going into the future, whether it is FR2, 5G, uh, or it's the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, you can look at hybrid beam forming where we do things, uh, uh, some analog RF plus some digital baseband, okay? Sort of giving us the best of both worlds. Of course, it you know it's 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 also using the fact that you know putting a large number of transceiver chains has some uh, sort of demands on cost and power etc. Okay, so I hope that got us going on this beam forming world. Uh, I'll be back with more as we look at some more nuances in that. Please look at our website for various details and also at Wi-Fi Now Academy for courses there. Thank you.